My name is Kevin Goldstein, and we're here to talk about building a debug version of the JDK. Well, what and why would you do that? Well, a debug version of the JDK is simply the JDK packages like Java, Java C, Java P, you know, things like that, that are built in a non-production mode. And you want to do this because you have an access to boatload more flags to the, to the Java environment when doing so. For example, you have something like 196 JVM options alone in the development mode. Now, I'm not teaching you how to debug Java programs. Again, this is building a debug version of Java, uh, not debugging. And we're going to be doing this on Linux. Uh, you can do this for Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux, but we're primarily a Linux shop, so uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, quickly, let's talk about what we're going to, what the curriculum is. We're going to boot up an EC2 instance. Uh, we're going to install a whole bunch of the, the necessary applications, such as GCC, in order to compile it. Also, ironically, in order to build Java, you need the previous version of Java, N minus 1 or N minus 2. We're going to get the actual code from the OpenJDK repo, um, and then we're going to start installing it. Now, once the installation starts, it takes quite a bit of time. Uh, in order for it to finish. So I'm going to scrub through that very quickly uh, so we can sort of skip to the end. This is supposed to be a small video. Also, while that's happening, I'm going to show you a small program that we wrote so we can explore some of these options live and you can see some of the benefits that you'll have from having a debug version available to you. Great. So real specifically, what are we talking about? Well, these are the commands that we're going to be running, right? We're going to be using the group install of development tools, which is the GCC tools. We're going to install Emacs simply because I like it. We're going to clone the GitHub. And then from the OpenJDK instructions, they tell you which packages that you need to install. So we're going to go ahead and install those. Great. Let's our our instance. I actually already have mine running. Now make sure that you run a T3 medium or larger because this does use quite a bit of computing power um, and uh, you need a quite a quite a fair amount of memory. Anything smaller than that it either stalls or it doesn't build at all. Um, so yes. and you can see this is a brand new host. It's been up for all of six minutes. So what we are going to do, like we're going to follow that script along quite closely. I'm simply going to copy up uh, this uh, OpenJDK Java 16 RPM to that host. And because we're trying to, uh, you know, get the get things moving along, I'm also going to uh, use a different terminal to start installing some of the other tools that we spoke about. If I can spell. Great, that's one. Let's get some Emacs up and running. Great, let's add some aliases. All right. Now, let's install, let's pop back up here and install the JDK. You can check it quickly. Great. Now, let's clone that repo. Well, first, let's make a development directory. Now let's clone that repo. Great, now that that repo is downloaded, we want to check out a very specific version of it, right? So we'll go to JDK. We want to pick out specifically the latest Java 17. And at the time of this video, that was 17 spot 23. So check that, get, check that out from Git. We're on a headless branch, which means we can't commit, but that's fine because I'm not a contributor to OpenJDK, so I couldn't commit anyway. Great, so if we go back to our checklist, we'll see that 
Got a couple of additional things that I need to install, free type cups, uh, lib, lib FFI, etc. So let's continue with this installation. We're just gonna do, great. Excellent. Now, we know, if we come back to our requirements here, we know there's a couple of different build build methodologies that we want to very specifically build with, um, we want to enable debug, right? So when we come back here, we're going to say bash configure enable debug. Missed one. Try again. Nice. And this, this output here, shows that we are in fact ready to build our system. So how do we now do that? We're gonna make images. That is gonna make an image of the JDK for us. All right, so this is going to take a while. While this is running, let me show you a very small program that I wrote that's going to help us um, explore some of the additional options that you have available with it. What I'm going to be showing is how to pinpoint de-optimizations when you're uh, latency hunting. One of the ways that you are that we're going to do that is by uh, enabling additional flags to see what happens when something is de-optimized. And as such, I'm actually hoping to have a program that does a couple of de-optimizations. Now this program is pretty simple. It starts out with an entry point uh, entry, and all it does is iterate through 100 million entries. And for any code path less than 1 million, um, it actually takes one particular code path. And any code path between 1 and 2 million, it takes a, sec a separate particular code path or a separate branch, a third particular uh, code path. I mean, you guys can uh, so on and so forth, right? Now the fact that each of these code paths are doing the exact same thing is completely irrelevant to the JDK. It just knows that it's going to have to go through a different code path. And we're going to see what this looks like while um, we're debugging. So great. Great. As you can see, this is a pretty simple program. Let's just have a look here. You've got the, the main entry point, a couple of resources, and that's about it. So if I just do an MVN install, This builds a fat jar for me. And if I look inside my target, there it is, my target with dependencies. Now let's copy this sucker up. Uh, key opt example, jar with dependencies. And there we go. And let's run this. all the thing right there we go we're printing compilations and as you can see there we have a whole bunch of stuff happening um it's de-optimizing once twice three times four times five times six times seven times eight times and if we go back to our code we see that it should be opt de-optimizing one two three four five, six, seven. Where is that eighth one coming from? Well, that's the exit from the loop, of course. So great. Let's put that code to the side again. Now, if we want to see
Oops. Again, I'm not used to actually spelling these out by hand. If we want to see what uh, compilation uh, information we can get, All right, here's all the flags that we have with a uh, compilation. All right, so I found that I noticed that this was just sitting there for a while. And so uh, I hit enter a couple of times in the <clears throat> I hit enter a couple of times and the system came back to me. What does that mean? Well, that means suddenly that I think I have a JDK image. Let's have a look. And if we go inside build, we see we have uh -oh. We see we have a Linux and thing. We have a JDK, and inside the JDK we have Ben, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, that's really cool, including say you know Java. Excellent. So let's uh, print working directory. Let's keep this in our back pocket and go back to our other. Um, oops, where you go? Sorry. Let's go back to our other program. If we remember, we have our Dopt program here. So let's uh, have a look there. Now, um, right, so that's our JDK 16. But if we say export Java home equals to this place, we say Java mm -hmm, export path equals Java home slash bin, and then our the rest of our path. We say which Java, we now have our pre-built Java. So if we say Java version, right? There it is, that Java 17 internal, right? It even gives you the build machine, the build host that we ran on it. So now let's uh, look at our program again. And we're not gonna make any changes as of yet. Let's make sure that the same thing runs uh, as we would expect it. And the whole thing runs and looks, you know, pretty similar, almost exactly the same, I would say. So one of the differences that we're going to be able to do, though, is look at the differences of the print final flag command, right? Notice how many additional compilation options are available to us, right? Um, so let's go have a look and Aha, now we're getting a boatload more information, right? We're getting the fact that it's being decompiled. We're getting a bytecode index, which is gonna help us debug the information from, right? And we're getting the reason that it was being decompiled, right? This if statement, this this special branch that we are moving from one place to another, these, this uncommon trap are forcing our systems to be decompiled, right? There's a wealth of additional information that we can get from using a debug version of the uh, JDK. All right, so what we were able to do is we booted up our EC2 instance. Uh, we installed uh, the appropriate version of GCC. We installed uh, JDK 16, uh, which is the N-1 of what we were trying to build. Um, we built it, and then we ran a program. And we ran a Java application using a JDK 16, and then we also ran the same application using JDK 17 uh, and showcased a few of the additional flags that you can use. I think that sums up our presentation. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, happy coding, everybody.